Hello, teachers, parents, and educational leaders, and welcome to this episode of Breaking Down the Best. Now, during this episode, you will get a peek into the members-only area where I have tons of resources to help you make math fun, make it click, and make it stick. There should be a link somewhere around this video where you can learn more. All right, now that we got that out of the way, let's get to it, and let's break down the standard. Welcome to Breaking Down the Best, a video series dedicated to breaking down Florida's best standards for math. So grab something to write with and maybe even a snack. This looks good. And don't forget to put a smile on your face. There you go. I see you. And let's dive into today's best standard. Hello, hello, everyone. My name is Sarah McCarthy, and I just want to thank you for taking time out of your crazy, busy, nonstop schedule to join me on this episode of Breaking Down the Best, where today we are going to break down the following standard, ma.3.ar.1.2. That's right. MA, that stands for Mathematics, 3 for 3rd grade. AR stands for Algebraic Reasoning. Um, and 1.2, it means that we're working with multiplication and division in this standard. So today's standard says that we will, that students will be expected to solve one and two step real world problems involving any of the four operations with whole numbers. And those four operations are addition, subtraction, multiplication and division. Down here at the benchmark clarifications, it says that instruction includes the understanding of, understanding the context of the problem. That is the huge part that we're making sense of what is going on here. We're not just seeing numbers and keywords and saying, oh, it says in all, that means that we need to add. We actually have to look at the scenario, see what's actually happening. If it's addition, it means that we're joining parts together. If it's subtraction, it could be one of three scenarios. It could be that we know the total and we're separating a piece. It could be that we have values that we're comparing, like finding the difference or finding how many more. That's the comparing problem for subtraction. Um, the third scenario with subtraction is that we know part we know the whole, like the total that we're trying to get to. We need to figure out that missing part. Like I have $5, but I want to buy a, a toy that costs $20. How many more dollars do I need? How much more money do I need? That would be a part, whole, huh. So those are three scenarios there. Separating, comparing, and the part, whole, huh, I say, um, for subtraction. For multiplication, we know that we have groups of equal things, and that could be rows of equal amounts. It could be it could be days that we're doing the same thing over and over again. It's groups of equal things. And for division, that's where we know the total amount and we're separating something into groups or separating something into groups of something. Okay, so it's really paying attention to the context of the problem to determine what's going on. We need to make sure that with multiplication and with division, that multiplication is limited to factors within 12 and also those related division facts there. How about those connecting benchmarks and the, and the horizontal alignment, meaning other standards in third grade that will that will apply with this standard, that will connect with the standard. And frankly, we are, we are doing a whole bunch of adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing in these NSO standards and also in the AR standards where we have the missing factor problems. 2.2 is the true false equations and 2.3 is where we have an unknown number. Lots and lots of multiplication and division so that goes nicely with this standard. I wrote for an expression, an example of an expression would be six times five where we're not really looking at an equal sign, we're just looking at what we're multiplying, just the numbers and the symbols. An equation would be where we have an equal sign present like with maybe an expression or a value on this side and an expression or a value on that side. Vertical alignment, so where are they coming from? In second grade, they did one and two step real world problems, or at least they, hopefully they did. Uh, most of that will be with adding and subtracting, so we're adding the element of multiplication and division this year. And then in fourth grade, AR 1.1, multiplying and dividing real world problems. 
in 1.2 is adding and subtracting fractions. So uh, this is a big standard. This is one that students tend to get frustrated with because Sometimes there's a lot of reading that goes on and a problem might seem overwhelming, but we have to teach them to read it multiple times, to break it down into digestible bites, right? To make sure that we are making sense of the problem. So we're going to apply all four operations and that students need to have a comprehension of the problem context. We need to have drawings. I'm big on drawings because that helps us to make sense of the problem and reading it multiple times. And for example, in the videos, I'll model how to read it the first time just to get the gist of what's going on. We don't even jump into the problem, we just are understanding what's happening in the problem. And then we break the problem down for our second read. We take one sentence at a time, one piece of the problem at a time, and break it down, draw it out, make sense of what is happening. These are some great guiding questions that we do highlight in taking on the best what is happening in the real world problem, what do we need to find out, what do the quantities represent, what does the number five represent in this problem, five what, right, and what will the solution represent in the problem. If you get an answer of 20, 20 what, what was the problem talking about, right, always connecting it back to what's happening in the problem. I just love all of this, I don't, all this right here, that teachers should model answering questions by drawing it out using phase 10 blocks, counters, think alouds, all of the things determining the reasonableness for solutions, it, you know, implementing rounding there to see if it makes sense, all the things for these problem solving strategies that build that comprehension. Um, I'm seeing this three reads. That's what I do. I never called it that though, but I do suggest reading it three times the first time to get the gist, the second time to break it down and draw it out and the third time to go back and read it and make sure that everything that we just did makes sense and that we answered all parts of the problem. So after I finish this, I'm gonna have to look up what this is, three reads, if it's similar to my style. Hmm, okay. In the common misconceptions or errors, oh, by the way, this document that I'm writing up all over, that I'm marking up, is not something that I created. It's something that the Florida Department of Education provides to the public. I'm just showing you what I do when I'm tackling and breaking down the standard um, to make the resources that are available to you uh, taking on the best for that program. So just want to throw that out there that you can have, you can, it is available to you. All right. Okay. Here, they mentioned estimating solutions. I just, I just talked about that too. And I, that's one of the things I was just talking with somebody the other day that I love the emphasis that's placed on estimation in these best standards. Love it. There's so much intentionality with that estimation piece. And, um, just as a math teacher, it keeps it by constantly reminding us that we need, this is a great place for estimation. It's a great place for estimation, uh, to really, make that piece come to life, right? And build that number sense. A strategy here, like beginning instruction by showing problems without their quantities. <gasps> I love this. I love, love, love doing this. I don't think I did this in taking on the best, but when I am modeling, when I'm teaching students, there are times that I'll take away the number and just put a question mark there. So students have to think about it in a whole different way. It's awesome to do it like that too. And here it says that sometimes students have a hard time understanding that two steps might be involved to solve and will only complete the first step. That's true. That is a common mistake that kids make. And I said here, just, I would share my thoughts on keywords. Um, as a new teacher, when I was a new teacher, I place a lot of emphasis on my teaching using keywords because that's how I was taught as a student. I was taught to look for the words in all, how many more, find the difference, some, find the product, all the keywords that we need to know. I was taught to focus on the keywords that I wasn't actually understanding what was happening in the problem. So here are my thoughts. I think keywords are important. They have to know that. They're vocabulary that they have to know. They need to know what sum means, what total means, um, when they see how many more that they are actually comparing values and that is subtraction. But we also, we need to place more of an emphasis on what's happening in the problem. 
because you can see if I have a total and sum is being removed, then that's subtraction. Or if I have a total and it's repeatedly being distributed into a different kind of group, into groups, that's division, okay? And there's a lot of emphasis placed on comprehending the problem and just filling in, like teaching keywords along the way, not as a soul, don't focus solely on the keywords. That is my opinion for everything. I think that's a, a popular opinion now too, um, but yeah. I would definitely suggest taking a look at this new section that the Department of Education has placed, the support for tiered instruction, to kind of get a grasp of what you might need to do to, to give your students extra building blocks to connect what's going on. So take a look at that. I'm gonna scroll down though to this instructional task. And I said, just looking at this problem, right? This word problem right here, a third grader might be like, right? That's going to be their first reaction is, oh my gosh, there's so many words. Ah. It is overwhelming at first, but if we focus and we have tools in place on making sense of it, then it's really, really helpful for students, which is done in taking on the best. I'll show you in a second with the, uh, the videos. Okay. I think that's good. So this again, four operations with real world problems. I love it. So let's take a look at the website and what you have access to with your whatever membership you have. I'm going to go to members, enter here, click on taking on the best, third grade, AR, and 1.2, real world problems using all four operations. So the very first thing that we're going to do with the bronze resources, you have video lessons and student guides or notes that your students can fill out. Um, the very first thing that we discuss is the fantastic four operations is what I call them. And we talk about in this video, we talk about addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. And students take notes inside of these little speech bubbles right here to set the stage for what is expected when we get to these one step real world problems and two-step real-world problems. So I'm gonna click on the one step. And remember those questions that were in the standard. What is happening in this problem? What am I trying to figure out? What does each quantity represent? Does my answer make sense? Helpful tips, read the problem three times. Draw it out until it makes sense to you. And we are tackling this. This is a video lesson and students are following along as I'm sharing aloud my thinking on what we do here, okay? Using these questions as tools and reminders. So awesome, awesome stuff. And you know what? I really tried hard to not put keywords in here. It says how many tomato plants does Xavier plant? It doesn't say in all, right? There aren't the keywords there. They have to understand what's going on. And then in the next one, it is the two-step word problem. The video goes through problems like these. Same kind of questions that we're referring to, but these are two step word problems where we're modeling with a drawing and practicing the whole three reads and all of that. Okay, so that's your bronze, which if you have the bronze, silver, or gold, you have access to all of these video lessons. If you have the silver, you have access to a little bit more. So let's see what you got. You can go back to the bronze at any time. Of course, you have the math misconception mystery video, and I'll show you the problem here. So we've got the video lessons. This is everything packed together. So for the standard, for the silver. So you have the video lesson. Okay, then we go into another video lesson, an extra practice, a video lesson, and extra practice. And then here is the math mission for the day, which is a math task. So use the model below to create a real world problem. Include the scenario and a question that needs to be solved. So here's the model and now it's kind of backwards. Students have to think in reverse, look at what's going on here and write their own problem. Okay. And here create an expression to match the scenario above using correct numbers and symbols. So they have to plug in what would make sense there. And then here for this one, it says, this is the math misconception mystery video. So 
this is where you just click play and I will guide you through the entire process for these. But um, first students will solve the problem independently or in a small group. These are great for math discussions and discourse, but first they'll solve it. Then they will watch as each character solves that same problem. Three of them are going to make a mistake and only one of them is correct. So they really have to pay attention and listen closely as the characters, which are just me, dressed up in silly costume, costumes, um, solve these problems and be silly with it. And then this is the detective report, the second page of Math Misconception Mystery, where you will explain why you think the character is correct and evaluate the other characters right down there. Okay, so that is your, and you have answer keys right there as well. Then for the gold, you have access to mini assessments, McCarthy Math 155, and this ad-free version of Breaking Down the Best. So let's go check out the gold. All right, so here's your mini assessment. There you go with some questions, a variety of question types you can see. Very, very wordy, but that's okay because they need to be able to do this, and they can because we will teach them how to break down problems and make sense of them. Um, this Breaking Down the Best video, obviously you're watching it here. It is also available on YouTube, which does have ads, but it's definitely a perk for being a gold member is having it right there with everything else. Um, and McCarthy Math 155, this was a program that I created for the Common Core Standards as a daily math intervention. So if we're looking at third grade and we scroll down, really anywhere that it says close reading word problems, just click on those and it will, if you scroll down to the bottom, you have these right here. These which operation are awesome. We have four problems here. A video lesson that walks through how you solve it. It's, it's awesome. So take a look at that. Anytime that you have a close reading word problem, you can click that. Um, there is a whole unit with 10 video lessons. What? 10 video lessons going over all four operations with two-step word problems. So if you are a gold member, this is why you're a gold member is because of this and the mini assessments that you get access to, okay? All right, I think that is it for what you have access to that connects with the standard. Just to recap, word problems can be super overwhelming at first for students, but my whole mission when I'm teaching it is to make it fun for them, to make it make sense, to give them a strategy, a way to approach the problem and say, okay, I've got this. I know what to do. I'll read it the first time to understand what's going on in the problem. Then I'll read it again. Now that I've got the, the jitters out, I'll read it again and just break down the problem one step at a time and then go back and read it for a third time to make sense of it. I'm going to model it with a drawing until I see which operation is happening. So I hope that I'm really excited for you to be able to teach this standard. And before we go, I just want to remind you that what you choose to do with your life, it really does matter. You matter. And I know that this profession can be super tough, but I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for everything that you do for students and for education. So thank you for helping students grow into who they were born to be. And I can't wait to see you on the next episode of Breaking Down the Best. So keep rocking it. Thank you for allowing me into your classroom and letting me be a part of your student's educational journey. And I'll see you next time. Bye. Okay, so I know that I just said goodbye for now, but I'm gonna ask you to do one more thing, okay? If you enjoyed this episode, please consider sharing it with your teacher friends or other leaders in education. That's how I get to continue doing what I love to do, which of course is supporting you all to the best <laughs> of my ability. All right, for real now, bye.